mean, when you look back at it, not everybody. Like, I, you might, some of it might be nostalgia glasses, but I also made no mistake that uh, back then was a fucking Shark Tank. The funny thing about back then was, back then it was more more passive aggressive than like. Now people are just aggressive, but back then it was very passive aggressive, and I kind of prefer that. Maybe, I don't know. I I don't like I don't I don't like how exclusive we are sometimes. But I don't like being super duper inclusive. Some people need to be routed, but some people don't. So even this year alone, we fucking routed a bunch of people. <laughs> well, have some luck. I mean, I mean, routed out like people like been fucking had left immediately after joining. Like usually, Cass took your fucking mantle of being. Well, Cass is Cass, fucking Cass autistic. Said, He's a fucking yeah. moron. Yeah, no, he's not a moron, but he's autistic. So. I, I was I was sort of clever with who I got out. If I saw promising somebody, I didn't. I didn't touch him. I, I mean, there's some people that, that could have... That could, well, Bobby was left unaccosted for the most part. Bobby went after you, remember? Yeah, Bobby came at me, and then we, we got talking. You, and we, he was cool. you tried to shit with Bobby, and Bobby was like, nah, nigga. I remember that. I remember the shout bar, because you, you went after Bobby. Bobby was defend. You went after Trance, and Bobby got in your ass. And uh, then you tried going at Bobby, and then that shit was uh, it was, fun, it was a funny little fight. How y'all had? And I mean, for the most part, we do. I right. and then and I took I, him under my wing and protected him. Oh uh, yeah, sure. I, I look at it like this. My my thing is like this. I don't have to. I don't have to beg people now. Like I don't have to go to, during Lucian time and go, "Hey guys, I need role plays." And then people go, "Okay, cool, got you." I don't need to do that. So. I'll leave it at that. This nigga... It needs, it needs to be inclusive because... Well, it, it became inclusive after... Because we were just... There was only Team Reliable. There was eight people making the shows work for like a year. So yeah. that's when it became inclusive because there was only eight people. So if you weren't in that eight, then you weren't in that eight. And now we've kind of spread out a little bit. But fundamentally, yeah. it's still the same people. I mean, I guess, but there's still people like I don't have to beg people to work. Like, no, I'll no, no, be- that. But I mean, like the reason that we became inclusive is is just literally through the fact that there was just eight people doing work. That was it. There was there was no there was no inclusive then because that was the whole roster. There was eight people with maybe twenty characters, and that was it. I think that's a little over, that's uh, underestimate. I mean, <laughs> that's a little not um. What's the word? Not fully accurate. It wasn't just eight. No, but I mean, like, I don't know how many exactly there was, but there was, I mean, you could count them on on one ha- on two hands. Yeah, it was about ten, twelve, maybe. Yeah, because it went it went from. I mean, I did it. Me, well, Parker, Dinsmore, Ken. Season, which season? Um, the season when we nearly died in like 2012. Was it? I thought it was. We died in 2015. No, we did die in 2015, but in in 2012 there was literally me, Ken, Parker, Dinsmore. Pato, Sean, KD, um, I guess Justin Ray's around the time. Which, which, game, which game was that? 2019? This was 2012. Or... No, but which game was it? Was it 2K12. WWE? Yeah, 2K12. So 11, 2011. The 12 was really good, though. Yeah, the, the game was good, but there was nobody here. Oh, um, okay. Go back to the Lucian and count how many different people were in those matches. Nah, I'll check it. I'll take a look. I'll take. I'll take your word for it because you know my memory is not not great. I just look at it like this. But that's where it was born. When Team Reliable happened, it was through necessity. It wasn't through us trying to keep people out. It was literally through necessity because we had to. Like there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a, there wasn't the luxury that we've got now where you can kind of, not book the same people every week. You had to do. You just had to do a match every week. There wasn't a choice. Like you had to. Yeah. Because I must have remember that, that year when I went undefeated on Riot for like a season, and yeah, you know, yeah, you did. Yeah, wow. and, it, and it wasn't <laughs> through. It literally wasn't through. Like it, it wasn't even like I was getting gaps. It was literally I was fighting every single week, and I had to fight every single week. Yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Forget about it. Jesus. Yeah, you're you're fucking right. That's the thing I always tell Dennis. I'm like, everything you do, people done before. So I was like, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Den- Dennis is one of maybe Dennis is probably like eighth or ninth person to do it to the level that we've done it. Like Kent did it, I did it, Parker's done it, Aries did it as much as I don't like him. I would I'd say maybe top five or six. Something like that. I mean yeah, yeah, top ten. Yeah, you're right, yeah, top ten. Because cause <laughs> there's always been a person that's had that work rate like with, with it was me and Kent for a long time were just we would be on every single night we'd be playing each other we'd be playing whoever was around and that was that was just what we did for like two seasons that was just yeah. how it was and uh 
then when we backed off, there wasn't anybody who kind of stepped up and took the mantle. That's when 2015 happened, because when me and Kemp both backed off at the same time, there wasn't anybody to step in. There just wasn't. And then, I guess Dennis came at the end of... When did he come? 2016? He came for the new the new, the new game. We had a, a PS. Uh, we had a PS. Uh, the four division was starting. Yes, that was two thousand and six. That was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. No, yes. no, it was. It's gonna be two years now. It's crazy. He came at the end of twenty fifteen. I'm gonna let me click. Or so, the beginning of sixteen. Yeah, he joined. September. No, no, January two thousand and sixteen. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So like. That was sort of the, the where because obviously we had that big we had to come to Jesus meeting in 2015 where you where we basically said do something with the site or we're all going to start our own site. Remember that? You didn't say that. We did. No, we did. That was I what asked. the feeling was. It was a case I, of if Jay isn't going to do it, we're going to do it ourselves. You said the you said feeling. You said feeling. You didn't say that was that wasn't done in black and white because you don't you already know me. No, yeah, we didn't all, no, no, we didn't say the ultimatum, but we did. We were, we were all like, if Jay doesn't like give us a platform to go with this, then we're going doing something else. That would have been interesting to see. Hmm. That would have been interesting to see. Well, it would have been. It would have been on, like, mine and Kent's dime ish. Oh God! So it would have been different, but everyone was down to do it. So. I mean, yeah, but then you also have the little factors of advertising and everything. I don't know. Maybe it would have yeah. worked. Maybe. What, the fuck what I'm saying is that w- that was when shit turned around because we had that big, a big altercation with me, me, you, and Bobby. Who were like, "Look, this is this is what's going to happen. We need to sort this show." <laughs> but that did. was that was 2015. That was the end of 2015. Yeah, that was though. the end of 2015 when the season started. Funny, it's summer of 2015 because that's when the new game came out. 2015. Yeah, this no, this it all came- happened in this all happened at like August time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because we were, we were fucking. Yeah, I remember that. That was, so, that was one of the most, cows, most people, new, most new people don't realize that I'm the Pat Patterson of OCW. <laughs> Will you fuck people? No, I'm, I'm the I'm the ideas man. Oh uh, yeah, I should I should have recorded. This would have been a great fucking content for a desk. God damn it! You're not recording now. No. I was... Well, I've got some good news for you. I think I might be. <laughs> Hang on, let me just check. Uh, no. Yes, yes, it's still recording. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's that's just super creepy. It just does it. I don't know why it does it, but yeah, it is recording. So, as, as much as sort of Dennis is a child and I dislike him immensely on a personal level, you have to respect what he's done because he's he he is me, and he doesn't want to ever admit it. But he is he was what I was in 2013, where I was beating everybody. I was I was do I was working with just whoever wanted to work with me. I was like, come on, let's let's do something. And I was sort of I was in the middle of all of this shit happening. And there, there was even a bit where I was kind of like in a turmoil situation where I didn't have a challenger. Remember remember that where you were like, I want to see new challengers. And I was looking up and down the roster like, I don't know who is a challenger yeah, here. That, yeah, that vaguely feels familiar. And that, that's very similar to the position that turmoil was in for a long time. No, the problem with turmoil, the turmoil had challengers. The problem with turmoil was was gross mismanagement on my no, part. No, no, I just I just mean how Dennis was sort of like he didn't have a a set in stone challenger in the same way that I, I mean I had Mugen, then Drago was became. Well, the, no, he did because it was uh, it was fucking Malu it was the guy. Malu wanted up taking the belt, and then that's what kind of set it in stone. His first fight was Malu, so. That's what that was the crux of the crux of it. <laughs> Why'd you just get quiet? I don't know. I don't remember that. I don't remember. The, yeah, no. Yeah. That's the, that's no, the, the point gap. I was just trying to make was that he he's he's tre- as much as he thinks that he's not. He's treading a well worn path of people through through the whole past of this. Nate Nate did it first. Oh, I've, I've said that. Yeah, every, every, most people have done. Like most of the people up there have done it. The, RD the, did. Yeah. Yeah, the Nate, people who are at the just, top of it. It's different time, different amount of times. Uh, lengthwise, he he would be up there with he'll be up there with you, Nate, uh, Kent, and them. Well, he's already well been... not not strictly yet because he hasn't been he hasn't been the guy for like I, I mean maybe is for like a year maybe. I mean, because if you look at the time, the time what we're at the end of two thousand seventeen now, and when did he when did he become turmoil champion? The end of two thousand sixteen. 
Yeah, he's had both for about he had he's actually had both for about a two a year now maybe That's roughly. Not true. Yeah, he's it not is. Been world champion for a year, like proper yes, world has. champion. No, he hasn't. He was only just, he only just beat Nate at the end of last season. No, no, that that one he lost uh, a couple weeks later. Yeah, so that's the real world title. He's been turmoil champion. Yeah, for... the turmoil champion. We've all been turmoil champion. No, he's been turmoil champion for about a year. Yeah, it's about a year. I think both are about a year now. Very close. If not a year, a year and change. It's been it's like I've said very... a billion times. The turmoil title isn't the world title. How dare you? Well, it isn't because there isn't there isn't the same level of competition on turmoil. They just it can't be because they're not seasoned in the same way that the Xbox guys were. And are. Some, there's some guys. Who yeah, are. there's some, but they're not. There isn't. It isn't a shark tank of people who just want to rip your face off, like like um, Riot has been for. Well, Riot's been as long as I remember. Well, shit, Riot right now is super duper thin. That's true. That's, that's the funny part, right? Is mad. Like right now, we have Musion and Cass at the. They're fighting at the pay per view. Cass is at the top. Yeah, he's Cass is not bad at the game. He's just autistic. Oh my god! What do you want? He's just all the what? That's how. That's how it is, baby. Hairline. P- <sighs> Hairline two point That is no. I refuse. How dare you? Hairline. Hairline nope. revisited. Nope. That's not only is that that's inaccurate. That's that's uh. That's out of touch as well. That is no way in fucking hell. Cass has been exponentially far and away more useful, more helpful, more knowledgeable, more... Uh, 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 what the fuck is it? The thing with that is they put too much... <laughs> this this sounds like I'm just talking politics now, but the... So this game isn't as logical as we think it is or we expect it to be. Never has been, never will be. In what sense? In the sense that you can't... So remember they were talking a few weeks ago about, oh, we've been doing this test and this test and this shows this and this shows this. Go back to 2012, me and Sean did the same thing. So what we did was a really baseline test of put an overall the lowest it'll go and an overall the highest it will go, fight them against each other, see what happens. And then we did two uh, minimum stats and two maximum stats and the differences between all three matches was just so minimal. Like, no, the only thing that actually ever mattered in this game was the actual reversals, because it gives you a fa- like, a, you see on the screen how many reversals you've got, and that sort of is something that you can distinguish so you can see it, and it's a real thing. Um, and then there's the movement speed and move and the ability to jump and shit, how far you can jump. They're the Rebels. only things that actually really made a difference in this game like you can do well, grapple speed and strike speed and stuff but the minimal differences between somebody who's really slow and somebody who's really big the only big differences come from a heavyweight like a super heavyweight and a cruiserweight in terms of visible difference in speed and weight and stuff well that's the that's what the consensus was yeah it always it always has been like that so the fact that you put so much effort into trying to work out how because the game isn't logical in any sense that's what we came that's what the conclusion was yeah. made <laughs> it just seemed like a long time to go. So by what? Spider. Cause deaths were done by Spooner. They spent that so much time sense. trying to work out, like what, I'm trying to work out how the game works, and it was just like it doesn't work. It barely works. Because remember, we would be watching the matches. Find out. That's the thing. The point is to find out to find out that there's no rhyme or reason. Because you'd be There's watching a- matches and you'd see like you'd see people get finished, uh, get signatures for getting beat up. And that's always been the case. The old, kind of like, and then no, and, and this one now there's there's certain moves when you have no reversal, you still do a reversal. Makes no sense. I saw someone get get a major reversal when they had no reversals. Like that's not how that works. Game is very strange. There's just so much weird weirdo shit that happens that there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just it's bugging. But nah, I, I like I like where we're at now. We have there's so many fucking rookies on PS4, like so many. And there's not so many on Xbox. Xbox, we have no, just one. <laughs> one, one guy. Yeah, one rookie. He's a good egg, old dude. Well, I consider them all rookies on the Xbox. I mean, that's not how that works because there's some fucking people who've been there on Xbox for years. That's not yeah, how that but works. But to, to be not a rookie, you have to have put in. How long have I been here? Ten years. You have to have put at least put in five, five solid years, like I have. <laughs> if you want to use that, excuse me. You're you're a rookie until you're in double digits of OCW time. 
Oh my god, no, that's unfair. That's, no. just, that's unfair. Even Ken's a rookie, that means. Yeah, that, yeah, that's not how that works. I mean, I, 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 I no, because there's people who've been here. There's people who've been here last time. They've done more than more people have been here for so many years. So if we if we went through the through like the, the actual, I'm looking at the roster page. So Baker's a rookie, in my head. Uh, B17's a rookie. Bobby's Sorry. not, but kind of is. Bray's definitely a rookie. I don't know who Bunny D is. Um, Corey Johnny. Ford, no idea. Court Marshall, rookie. Ginger, no idea. Dimsmore's not a rookie. Crossbones isn't a rookie. Dennis is still pretty much a rookie. I mean, I know he's been there two years, but... Yeah, still a rookie. Jackson's Jackson, I don't consider a rookie because he's been doing this elsewhere. So in that sense, I don't see him as being a... a but how do you know Dennis hasn't been doing this elsewhere? What? How I'm, do you know I'm Dennis? not aware of his past. Oh. If I don't has. know. Um, H2O, again, he is a rookie, but I, obviously I know his past as well. Juki's just... <sighs> not a rookie. Cassidy's kind of... Cass is... See, Cass is a weird one because Cass came in, got, got kind of catapulted to the moon. Because he became turmoil champion, and then just kind of, I, I don't know what happened to him. He just kind of like, do you know what I mean? He kind of just became. He was a disappointment because he he didn't like to write, or he didn't want to write. Oh, there, was a, there was an explanation for that that I don't remember in, f- in front of me now, but he does right now. All yeah, he the does time. now. He's just, like he's just, he's his mindset because I, I think, think he came he from was- somewhere where where that wasn't OCW so he came from somewhere where maybe it was more competitive and it was more a sense of you only do your matches and OCW I don't remember the story man I really don't my brain is fucking frazzled dazzled most people struggle with the 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 demands of what OCW actually is OCW is never it's not it's, it's not a hybrid as much as we say it is because it is very results focused, the game. Like you can still get over and be shit at the game, Bobby Minio being an example of that. But <laughs> you there's a real sense of sort of you have to be good at this game to get to the top. But yes. but at the same time, you also have to be like a not not necessarily a top tier writer, but you need to be able to hold your own when it comes to writing. Or you need to get really lucky and have someone who can with you. So, it's most people struggle with a transition because it's so you have to. You can't just be like a a ranked match meathead when you come to OCW. No, no, yeah. what, look what happened to that kid the other day in um in in the Discord channel where he was like talking all that shit. I don't know if it was somebody trying to troll, but it was it was always the joke that. You know, people would come in and they'd want to be a world champion a week later. And OCW doesn't have shows that often. That was always the joke. Like you don't, you don't get to have the show. You don't get to be world champion within a week because there's only one show a week. And it was like people don't get that. People want immediacy when they come in in a lot of cases. And OCW is a really slow burn, and you have to. It's like real life, and people is people struggle to get it because they they don't. It is it's a weird microcosm. It's a weird like little little corner of the internet that we've built that you've built because this i was talking with someone about this the other day because they would basically wanted to know what like how i know you so i was like well he's got this thing and it's really new it's really like niche and it's really nuanced and stuff and it's to find ocw you have to be you tell anybody about what i do so to find ocw you have to be really you have to be looking for ocw you can't you won't just you're not just going to find... Like, it's not a league. You can go and play in a league all day. You can go and play in a pro boards league all day. Nobody cares. You can yeah. try and be you can try and be high in the ratings or whatever. And, like, on, on Twitter and stuff, there's all these RP accounts of, of these shit all look exactly the same wrestlers. And none of them really have a place, like a home. I mean, it's what it's called, where you kind of, like... Yeah, they're, they're somewhere they are. But isn't that simmed? Uh, I don't know. I think it's simmed. It's, yo, it's... It's weird because I've you know here's a funny thing too. There's people like apparently we're getting we're getting there now that people are talking about us in not a positive sense. <laughs> I mean never it's never a positive sense, but like there's there's people saying shit about us. But there, a lot of those pl- call places, if I'm on, if I'm 
led to understand how they work is you do a match and it's just like um you basically you don't have any rules so you can cheat each other and yes. then you do the match and that match is the good match like you you i guess you hit spots and and you know shit like that but i'm just thinking like i i would i could never like if i'm fighting you and you fucking cheese me out and then now i gotta make you look good or some shit like that i could i could never be okay with that no at all so what was like, the so what was the what? Oh, what's I, the I think. Like, what's the what? Oh, the um, I don't know. Like some people, I, w- I was told that a lot of us, uh, like they look at the handbook and they just go TLDR, no, or some shit like That's that. Something that I was, uh, something that I was actually, I was kind of thinking about was, like when you people don't have an attention span anymore, which is which is fine, but that's that's one of OCW's massive things is that if you come in, you have to be willing to to just kind of submit to a different way of thinking because yeah you need attention span because if you don't you're going to get chased out 90 percent of the time yeah and it's you not even that you will be chased out it's just a case of if you if you're willing to put the time into ocw i mean it is a humongous I'm, it, let's call it what it is it's a colossal waste of time you're going to die nobody's going to know that this ever happened at some point but <laughs> it's it's it can be satisfying in the sense that there's a lot there's a lot there. This kind of this, so I've made some some like people that I consider friends for OCW, and sure. I like playing with them. I play with them in different games. I talk to people all the time, and it's it's a really big. It's been like a really big thing in. I mean, in helping me grow into like a human, an adult human rather than you a child. Notice with your fucking trolling. Hmm. You would never notice with your fucking trolling. No, but I mean, in terms of like real life and shit. So. In all of, I've wore every single hat in OCW. I've done everything there is to do in OCW. Um, I've been, you know, I've managed people. I've been the guy, the kind of people look to. I've been the guy that tried to, to you know, like I've I've done all of this shit, and it's kind of helped me in real life. Because if I didn't do all that shit, then I'd be this weird, awkward, Bray character. Where <laughs> it's not nice. Yeah, it's actually. He actually turned. He actually turned the corner too. I talked, spoke to him, and he uh, turned the corner. Because it's it's strange if you if you're willing to, because all of these people are just normal guys. They're just trying to live their life, and they're just kind of doing what they do. And this is their outlet for being creative. And obviously, I've gone off to do other stuff, but I still consider it to be like a big part of what kind of turned me into what I am now. Oh, that's like, good. It helps me to grow, grow up a little bit. I guess. I mean, I know that I troll people. I know that I wind people up all the time, but in a real sense, it's made me grow into just a more confident person. Like I've, because it's kind of, it's something that you don't get. Like, so say you get booked. Just just look at it from like a, a standpoint. If you get booked in OCW, so you then have to contact a stranger in a lot of cases. Like you will get to know them, but when you first come in, you're contacting a stranger. And you're kind of like working with a stranger to to make something, and that collaboration is something that you don't get in a lot of places in real life. Like you just don't get that. That's a really good point, Jesus. Yeah. So, the collaboration and the working together, like because I've always said this, and people sort of don't believe me because of the way that they think that I'm some sort of evil motherfucker is that OCW is a team, like first and foremost, no matter who you're fighting, no matter what um, selfish reasons you've got for doing what you're doing, ultimately it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a team, we're all pushing, the same, we're all pulling in the same direction, we all want the same thing, we all want to be successful, we all want to make, you know, make each other laugh, make each other enjoy what's going on, so we're all working to the same end, so it's kind of, it's kind of like it it gives you these life skills that you wouldn't necessarily have otherwise. Like people don't know how to work together. And it's really evident when somebody first comes in where they, <laughs> if they've never done it before. Yeah. <laughs> so you can either throw what you think you know out the window oh, and man. work with somebody who does know better than you in this sense because we've I mean I I say this all the time but between like me Mugen uh, Kent, Parker, Nate—we've got hundred years' experience in OCW. 
like it, it just not just in OCW, but in because what OCW is is, is effectively it's a really quick turnaround machinima, if you will. I remember machinima. Yes, I remember machinima. Yeah. So basically, what we do is we make we make real things using a game engine, and we turn it around in a week. And most people, you can't turn anything around in a week anymore. Not anything creative. Not anything yep, worth yep. watching. That's uh. Oh my god, that's actually <laughs> that's actually uh wow. That's uh, I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah, you, this, for the amount of entertaining content that gets put out, yeah. How long does it take um F F A M or whatever it's called to put out a video? That's that's oh, a monthly months. thing. Yeah, months. I, I think it's more. I think it's more than months sometimes. Yeah. And what people are learning through OCW is they're learning how to edit videos. They're learning how to how to re- read and write, and that doesn't sound. That sounds like really um, patronising that I'm saying people are learning to read and write for OCW, but genuinely people learn how to write better and read better for OCW because they have to, because there's so much content. If you want to enjoy OCW to the best of it, you yeah. you have to learn to read and write like to a high level, to a decent level. So, like, I don't know. It's just OCW teaches you stuff in a way that you never would kind of pick up elsewhere and that's why people stay because it becomes such a part of your life that you can't get what you get from OCW in a different way you just cannot like there isn't a way that you can consume this this level of of immersion in any other way in in life I don't think I can't think of it if there is yeah like because there's so so many nuances to it and there's so many like yeah, like take take for example, like it's something that you never would expect to happen because it's just a game. But me versus Drago is always a train wreck. <laughs> but the reason it's always a tra- but me versus Kent is always like a masterpiece, and it's because there's there's different there's so many different layers and nuances to how people play this game because it is a really fundamentally it's the same game, but it's also a really a really intricate you need to know how to do certain things in order to do certain things. And because of that, people have different tendencies which match up well against each other or don't sometimes. It's not like, it's not like say, a Call of Duty where you can run and gun or you can stand back and be a bit more cautious. There's two options of how to play that. With this game, loads of different options. But because there's, there's so many different combustible elements in a match, there's, there's different ways, there's different theories, there's, there's so much going on that that you develop like your own I don't know if you've got a logical mind then you develop you you can look at a match beforehand and you can develop some sort of strategy and game plan you could OCW can be as involved or as just you know like it can be as immersive as you want it to be so if you want to do your homework and you want to work on people and work out what people do and stuff like I always did like I know Kent does like a, a lot of people do um then you can do that or you can just go in and have fun and have a fight and it's kind of it's a lot of things for different people but ultimately it teaches it's, it's kind of I mean it teaches it teaches people like I know this sounds really horrible but this teaches like KD how to edit video he'd never be editing videos in real life well like, to be fair need to reason to... now because of you know he no, he's done it in the past oh yeah, yeah 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 so he would never know how to do that he'd never have a reason to do that but in OCW it kind of gave him a new skill that he wouldn't have got elsewhere that's true. Damn, I, I I honestly didn't think of any of this. See, you don't you don't think of it. I, I mean, I because when I did step away from OCW, obviously some people know the reason why I did. Um, it's to try and do something different on the outside, and everything that I've tried to do for that other venture, I learned to do in OCW. Yeah, and it's crazy. Yeah, it it gives you, it gives you a, a skill set that I don't know. Uh, and then you got other people where like you have to beg for content. Hey guys, can you uh hey guy resolution is uh, a couple weeks away. I need everybody to do stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh god. I- I'm just trying to think if 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 I had to record matches for people or if I just had like if I just had like let's say it was um if it was just Dennis uh Kent um Mugen and maybe I don't know Spooter. Like if if they 
if they were the only people recording matches and they were the only people responsible for recording matches, do you do you know how quickly we would fucking sink? Or like if if I was the only one responsible for recording matches because no one else could be either bothered well, or we had look- that almost situation in about two thousand and twelve where there was only maybe four or five of us that could actually record out of yeah. everybody. So we would have to be in every match and it was really inconvenient, but what it did do was that allowed, was like years ago yeah. but okay, so i continue but what it did do was it allowed all of the content to be uniform in quality and not only that all of it to be turned around quickly so that sounds insane but i the mean the best say, way to I do a show and the best way to yeah. go on carry on no you, you make your point well, no. well my point is is like the nowadays you can you know the the quality like the technology is there that you don't it's not required all the time and the, the you know most of the time the quality is uniform anyway hmm that's my thing. My thing is is that I don't have to fucking um I don't have to like do everything or beg people to do shit. They just do stuff, if that makes any sense. That's what I like about OCW now. Like I don't have to fucking ask people for shit. Yeah. I mean I ask in the sense like, hey man, we're doing this, so you know, I don't have to say, like, guys, Lucian is, you know, like a couple weeks away. Be sure to do like, I don't <laughs> The strange thing is there's so much cool shit that we could do extra with OCW. Like we've tried in the past, so we've tried like commentary on matches, we've tried We've um, done everything though. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I mean. We've tried live shows and stuff, we've tested every everything. And you need certain conditions to kind of make some stuff work. But OCW now is a weird it's an amalgamation of we've thrown a lot of shit at the wall and we've ran with stuff that sticks. And it's a tried and tested formula at this point, and it kind of everyone submits to the same way of doing things, and it means that we have a consistent level, and it means that we can have a consistent turnaround. And a lot of places would never like you, like take you for example, you would never be able to organise this this level of this bigger team in real life to do what we do on a weekly basis. You couldn't do that in real life. None of us could. Yeah, I doubt it. It's it's a strange Not stretch of the time. Remember, it's already gonna been fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ, thirteen years. Thank God. Yeah. But it's a, it's a strange thing that we've all just kind of come to. I mean, it is through what you've done. You you kind of don't. I don't think you. I don't think you sort of respect a lot of the time that you've created something here that is completely unique, and it is. I mean, there's there's other people who do a similar thing, but this is completely unique. It's a way for people to meet each other. So it's a community that's been built. It's a completely different style of, of using this game or using, not just this game, but using games. Like, there's nothing else like this, really, that I know I mean, of. I've seen would, shit that's kind of similar, but never... I mean, people that, like, try to do what we do. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot And nowadays, there's lots of people that do what we do. But I don't. I don't think into the level that we take it. Like I, I don't know how to put it. Like I don't think you you sort of acknowledge how big an influence you have had on not just you, but what you've built on every single person in this whole attached I, to it thing. Yeah, I don't have the the capability to fucking. But when um, you think f- about it, the amount of like, and if if we're going to be serious, the amount of money that you've sunk into this. And it's a fruitless endeavor. You're never going to get anything out of it. You're not going to make any money off it. The only nope. thing that you do it for is for the love of it. So the fact that that's, that's even, you've even done that is kind of, it's, it's crazy, but it's also, yeah, I'm not. It, it shows a commitment to just, I think this will work. And you've got enough people here that have all had the mind, same mindset. Like, I when I first came to OCW, I kind of wanted somewhere to just play and fuck around. It wasn't until I came back the second, like the, the on my proper run. That yeah, because of... remember, but you were like flaky. That was that was the argument that I had with, with Juki. Like the argument was like, why do you let Juki back in and blah 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 blah? It's just gonna disappoint me. I don't understand how you people work. And I'm like, well, you got to give people a chance to fail. Like Juki's case, he he fucked up. Because ooh, firewalls modifying a program that's interesting. Prevented from Juki fucked up because you know he went and he flaked a bunch of times, and then he went someplace else. And because he was, you know, I guess I would say trick, but you never know people. People are grimy, so whatever. Uh, you know, he found out she was garbage. Came back, and I mean, I took him back, and then 
he's been okay ever since so far. You know, but the point I'm making is, is that you got to give people. My my thing is, is that I like usually if people are normal, Juki's a normal guy, so he, he's normal in the sense that, you know, people fuck up, and you got to give people the chance to fuck up, and then see what they do. So in his case, he fucked up once or twice, but it's never been. Well, I'm like, like a he, living example of. Yeah, because that's the, that's the point I'm making. Like he he flaked out, but like people knew he was gonna flake out. So like whatever, don't care. You were garbage for so many years, and I, it got to the point where I even started making funny. I'm like, what? like because I remember like uh, Geo wanted you gone. Like he was like, oh fuck that guy, and then and ban him. I'm like, no, no, no. So I've been like this for the, for the longest time. People always give me shit that I'm whatever, but I've been like that for the longest time. I'm like, nah, give him a chance, or whatever. And then. Long story short, you did what you did, did mad shit, you know. Well, I didn't, I think I didn't, I didn't understand. When I bought into what OCW is, is when I put in the work and I became sort of a complete turnaround from what I was before. And it's, it's buying into the mindset, like you can't come into here thinking it's a league because it's more than a league. It's, it's yeah. not a league. Yeah. It's not a yeah. league in the sense that you know a league. This is as close to an actual wrestling company. It sounds mental. It sounds absolutely insane. <laughs> but this is as close to a real wrestling company as you or I or most of the people in this whole thing will ever get. Yeah. And I mean, even Roddy said it. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Roddy. <laughs> and it, it put, you put in so much time and effort and you have like veterans who will treat you like shit and haze you when you first come in. And it, it feels like real, re, real Yo, fake wrestling. We've had people like who've been in the business who were like, "Yo, it's like it really like that stupid quote that I put on." And like someone said that I'm trying to remember who the hell did it. It was some indie dude who was like, Eric like "Nah, some indie dude." He he was in, I think oh five to like oh six or something. He he was here for like a hot minute, but he was an okay person, nothing fancy. And he was an independent wrestler. I don't. I wish I could remember his fucking Marty name. Nah, it wasn't him. He 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 passed away he a couple died, years ago. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, no, but he he mentioned um. Yeah, he was like, oh, it's like the same thing without without having to travel. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess, and you don't get paid, as Kevin Nash would say. Why? Why would anyone do that? I don't know, cause motherfuckers are nerd. And the thing is, I don't really like you said. I don't take credit for none of this shit most of the time, and I don't really. The only reason I do what I do is not even because I enjoy it; is because the people. Like, I don't want to let people down. Like the moment everyone starts being, you know, bitch made, I'm like, all right, fuck it. We had a good run, guys. We're we're, not, we're closing the doors. Yeah, you told me that you would close the doors the day after Lucian Ten. No, and yeah, you you convinced me to do that, and then I decided no, not no, to no, do. No, 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 no. I didn't convince you to do it. What happened was we had a conversation, like we're having now, and the conversation ended with, if shit doesn't pick up, then I, I, this is this is it. Like I need to make it to ten. That was what you said to me was, I need to make this to ten. I yes, to make I, remember, I remember that. Yeah, I wanted to hit ten. And then you said, once I've hit ten, I can do whatever. If it fails, it fails. And it kind of, and this is me taking credit for it again. But ten was a rebirth, and me, I mean, I I always say it, and um, I don't know if it's actually true. I don't I don't put any stock in it. But I've I always say that that's the best match in OCW history, me versus Nate. But what it did was it headlined a card that was. It was it was stellar. It was it was a good card from top to bottom. There was nothing. There was no real dead weight on it. And what that proved was that what what was also strong about that card was it wasn't the same people in every single match. Yeah. Whereas the previous few Lucians had been. So what was really cool about it was it was kind of like it wasn't a passion of passing of the torch in the sense that me and Nate are still here and we're still around. Like yeah, I'm retired sort of, but I'll show up again because I always do. Um, like herpes. Yeah, exactly. But, and the same thing with with Dupree as well. Dupree's semi-retired a couple of times and then comes back. He always comes back. And the reason is because we're bought into this mindset that you've built. And it's the same reason that Versus came back. It's the same reason that Margin came back. It's the same reason Parker always comes back. It's, it's a really hard thing to explain, but we all owe you something. Not in a in like a money monetary sense or you know not in even a real sense but we all feel Strange. like we owe you something and fuck knows why because you 
you you can be the most irritating, difficult person in the fucking universe, but <laughs> this chair, yeah, you look like, you like you don't see book and chat. Yeah, there's a reason that I well I've, I saw book and chat for so long. I, I can understand. I know exactly what it what it reads like. Man, why aren't we giving this guy a chance? But because he's shit. Yeah, but why don't we give him a chance? No, but he's shit. He's not going to do anything. <laughs> You know it's funny. I don't even do that anymore. But I'm just, I'm, I'm more chill now because I have dele- people that delegated. So, I think the it's- the people that have come back will always come back because of the affinity that we've. Because we we are we've all built this. I mean, you built it, but we've all added our own spins to shit. The reason that we call the Morrison method the Morrison method is because this was the uniform way that Mike Morrison started. Yeah, and we I used to love it. I'm like, this is the best. You guys need yeah. to use it. There's. Oh, like heaven shut up and bold you motherfucker and we we've all built like all the sizzle on the steak is from us you got the steak you gave us the steak and we put the sizzle on it but we've all got bits from each other so we've all named each other's moves we've all stolen each other's moves we've all we've all just built this thing that people enjoy and we enjoy and now the outside world is getting it because we've been saying to this saying to you for ages that this should be on YouTube and you've always not said no but kind of been apprehensive about it I don't know why it was always an ownership thing with you you always thought it was like giving up the ownership to YouTube well, yeah, it, it's it's an ownership thing and it's also then I have to be beholden to another party I don't like being beholden to shit yeah, like, yeah. I, but I get it but it also gives you the I had to I think delete because there was so many violations on it violate for music and shit. And I was like, this is fucking stupid. I'm on the old site, it was fine. But now I can't. So that that's shit like that's what bug me. If I if there wasn't a case and I wouldn't mind. And yeah, but what, what our yeah. point well my point always was was that this is the, the best way to get eyes on it. Because we know that what we do is unique and we know yeah. that what we do is good in and in, in, in most cases it's good. Even even OCW on its worst day is better than most of those feds on their best. It's definitely better it's definitely better than the the offshoot feds that have happened from OCW, the ones that have stolen our rules, the ones that have kind of built themselves here and then gone elsewhere thinking they could do it by themselves because they can't do it by themselves. The point is, you couldn't make this by yourself. You couldn't make this with three people. The reason OCW works is because we have 10 to 20 strong people who want to work together to, to build this thing. So it's... There's always going to be that affinity. It's like a brotherhood. Like once you're in, you're in. And it's I mean, that was yeah, something that Versus you said say, to me. You say that, but there's a lot of times that people are in and then they get kicked out from people like you. So name one person that that has been kicked out unjustly. Shit, you got me. You got me there, buddy. Mm. Because <laughs> if you remember it correctly, um, one of the people who got well bullied out of the Fed by me bullied. was yeah. One of the people he the reason was that he posted a beheading video at the intro to his match, like uh-huh. an actual beheading video, and Jesus. then couldn't understand why that was sort of why I was taking issue with that. So that's why he had to go um, <laughs> because he was a fucking retard, and he still is a fucking retard. And you can go and see him on YouTube and look how much of a retard he is. He's got a big gaping chin and talks like this, guys. How are you today, guy? And the reason that he didn't fit in was the same reason that I mentioned earlier. He didn't want to work. It's the same. He didn't want to work with us. He wanted to be, he wanted to be the guy, and he wasn't the guy. And the reason he wasn't the guy is because nobody respected him. And you earn respect in this because it's fake, real fake wrestling. And, fake, fake. Yeah, fake, fake wrestling. <laughs> and right. you you earn respect by your actions. And as much as people don't like me, I've I've earned respect with the right people. So I kind of... The people that matter know that they can rely on me to do shit in certain situations. That's why I kind of skated along for so long how I did. Because I was kind of like... I mean, I, I've said this to you a couple of times, but I was the leader of a group of guys that were like pit bulls for you so you would you would click your fingers and we would go after the person that was how it worked for a long time (laughs) and nobody you'll never admit to that but you know it's true and the people who were involved know it's true but 
it, click my fingers. Yeah, and and people, I, it rubs people up the wrong way. But I'm not here to make friends. Shit, you rub I'm, me the wrong way. How many times have we have we fucking argued? Yeah, exactly. In public and in private, we've argued like, like so raging, many times. Like we've we've had a tumultuous tumultuous relationship. I like that word. I don't know what it means. I find it offensive, but I like it regardless. Like where I would consider you to be. I mean, as much as I dislike you on a personal level, I would Fantastic. consider you to be one of my closest internet friends. I hate you. And so much. Is, is and from America, I'm gonna fucking fight you, you oh, generous looking motherfucker. Sorry. That was a moment that we had for a second. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> the, the re- if, if you think that I'm being unjust in any situation, come and talk to me. And and I'll have a conversation with you about about your feelings and why you think that um That's you know, not even the case though. Like I have we've seen what you've done most of the time and it, it is just name trolling. Name one bad like, things that I've done. Name I one bad thing. You know I can't name shit, man. I, I don't I don't have that kind of recollection. If whoever's listening to this because it, apparently this is a desk now. Um Might be right. I yeah. gotta I gotta edit some parts out, but for the most part it's a fully functional desk. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. So if if you can think of one thing that I've done that was unjust and uncalled for, then by all means throw it at me. But I don't think you both find anything. Maybe I mean some people might, but I oh that one dude um what was it in the shout box like lat no shit you you know the guy uh, you were like how do I do so and so he goes well like duh well you just have to and you're like why the fuck is this rookie talking to me yeah but that that was <sighs> that was during the phase when I was being. I was purposefully being awkward with people. Oh my god, that was amazing! <laughs> he fucking loved us. Did he leave as well? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, he up. left. He left. Oh, but the funny thing with that guy is, um, like, how do I how do I explain this? The thing with OCW is, I find that a lot of a lot of people, uh, how, how do I how do I explain this in a, in a way? Like, I'll take for example the guys like Drago, Court, Pam. Um, most of the time, like no one says anything about them. Like they just kind of do what they do and you, you like, or you don't like, and, and, and it is what it is. But then there's certain people that they'll do stuff and then people will say things like Ray's or, uh, yes. who else? Or Bray. Like it's just a certain thing, certain qualities Would that you just know why? bring people to say stuff. Why? Because one of the people who normally goes after people has gone after one of them. Ray's was always... I was always on at Ray's. Parker was always on at Ray's. And people flock to that and go, well, he's an easy target. I'm going after him. Bray's oh, the fair. same. Fair. So if if the leaders, and I know you don't like the idea that I've ever led anything, but I've been one of the bigger leaders in OCW. You, you did, you did try to pull the, you, you, you did say like, oh, you don't have the, you don't have your, you, what was the what was the stupid line you told me? Something about you don't have your your uh you don't have your ear to the ground. Yeah, or your hand on the, these trenches with us. Yeah, you don't have your hand on a pulse of, of OCW. Which was true. And this that and the thing about yeah, you were talking shit. Oh, and the, you don't know what the hoots want. So then I acclimated myself to the hoots, and then you were like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you shut the fuck up. So I was I, proven I, right. I was proven no, correct. You, you were still talking shit though, and you would talk shit. Now we're talking. These people are like, yeah, no, he's don't worry about him. He's not even talking about. It's like, oh, okay. So yeah, so no, so fuck you. I was and proven that, correct though, because if you didn't do that, then you would have still thought that you were, you would have still thought that everything was okay. Because now you listen I to mean, people. You didn't used to listen to people. Well, you used people, to just come in and get it. People don't even talk to me either. Like it, it, it is funny how no one really comes to me or or talks to me anymore. Very rarely. Do you know what? Do you know? Talk you know to why? me. I've convinced them not to, but I've only convinced them not to because. I need to be in your ear at all times telling you what's going to happen. I can't have all well, people crowding not, it. You've been retired forever, but even nowadays, like, it doesn't matter. Like with the turmoil people and, and Dennis and them. Like, here, I'll speak to Dennis, I'll speak to Pam, I'll speak to KD, uh, Dims, Kent, Trash, Mugen, uh, sometimes B17, Tran. I said Trans already. Uh, there's a few people. Most people will not reach out to me at all. That's always very, been the case. Yeah, I mean, before it used to not be, and then I had Parker as my umbrella for shit for a while under his under my umbrella. Yeah, and the be- shit between Parker. in in two thousand and thirteen, twelve, when it was me, Parker, and Kent that were kind of running running the site, and you were kind of booking the pay per views, doing the pay per views, but kind of yeah. largely not that involved. You didn't see a lot of the shit that we were dealing with, like 
it, and but during that era, it was kind of. I, I'll admit that me and Parker, as as a combination, are too heavy handed in certain situations. Oh, oh, you think? You think? Yes, I do. And it it kind of it was strange because it was. Do you know like you always hear stories of like the Undertaker being a cunt to people and being yeah. like the the locker room judge and stuff. Yeah. That was our equivalent of it. <laughs> and now you have like autistic cash shouting at someone and he doesn't have the same effect. Like I don't think he has the same I mean, effect it as, does as because people leave because of him. But yeah, but they'll be back. If if they were worth staying, uh, they wouldn't leave because oh, Cash yeah. is shouting at him. But what we would do was he, so, he's good at his job though. That's the, that's that's the only reason. Like he's he's one of the people that's actually qualified for his job. So the thing is like how do I explain it? Like, because he he does the stat checking, and because he's a beautiful mind, he can spot the issues immediately, and it is what it is. But the problem is, rather than just say, "Oh, hey, you have to fix this," he just fucking wow, wow, with a stupid voice. Well, that was something that we used to back in it. So me and Parker would obviously. My thing tell, was delivery. Yeah, delivery. So we would send Kent to do stuff like that because Kent is more of an even keel person. Yeah, and he, we we would handle the. Uh, the, the, the dressing down situations. Oh my god! Yeah, remember when I used to do it? Oh my god! Well, no, were you around here when I used to do it? Um, maybe. Perhaps I know Parker was for the most part because I used to. Jesus Christ! I've made people lose their goddamn minds. It was a fun times back in the day. Nowadays, I'm just I'm very, I'm very chill. I just as long as the stuff works, I'm usually not super duper upset. I just know that at the end of the day, I rather I rather people be like, um, you know, when you have your dad or whatever, and uh, or, or, or a parental figure or somebody, and like they're mad, but I'm they're more. Mad, dis- but I'm just disappointed. Yeah, and you had that. This you like, oh man, I'm disappointed. I I rather people feel that than oh man, he's pissed at me. I ra- I rather have the disappointment. Well, that's, that's the affinity thing I was talking about. So if 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 nobody cares for you, then they don't care if you're disappointed. Yeah. So that's. What happens when you get grandfathered into OCW is a strange thing of it is it's like your colours almost, it's like a gang. Like you feel such this strange affinity to like you and OCW. Well some would... people are very uh eh. Some people are what? Some people, you know, don't feel that and those are the people that don't generally They don't laugh. succeed. Yeah, exactly. They don't succeed, sure. Yeah. And like as much as as much as like, because let's just go from like world champions. The people who have been world champion in this in this whole thing have all had have all had a decent relationship with you at some point. Like sure. it's, you've grown into like being, do you know, like just a. I, I don't know. You kind of they are your guy, and as much as for better or worse, at that time they're your guy. They're your go-to guy. And yeah, fair. And, you know, pe- people think that it's a really easy task to, you know, when they first come in, they really they think it's something that, you know, anyone can do to just be one of the people who is, who's looked to as being the guy. And it's, not only is it not an easy task, but it's, it's, it becomes daunting and it becomes... So I genuinely, and this is the so obviously I would I would never admit to this usually, but since since we're doing this, I'll admit to it now. I would genuinely spend all of my time, my free time, because I, I used to work in the airport, so I used to have like a lot of walking about between things, doing my job because I, it was a lot of traveling, and every single second of that traveling when I was when I was the champion was, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to improve this, I need to do that, and you never. The reason that you become the best guy is by obsessing about it. You don't just look into it, if that makes sense. Like you don't just it doesn't just happen to you. You get you get the opportunity because you've proven yourself to be one of the best guys, and you do develop an obsession, like a really really deep obsession to it. And I don't think the people who come in and like I'm going to be champion next week ever really have that in them. No. They never no, have no, that no. commitment to it. They never have, like... Because, like I said before, ultimately, this is just... We're all going to die. This is a pointless exercise. We're just wasting time doing this, but... Sure. It's a community, though, so you yeah, still make, make exactly. friends. You, uh, 
you yep. are the guy you are the leader of that community at that given moment and you have a responsibility to do that and you, you know it's funny though um sorry to cut you off real quick we we had oh man i think back in november we had um you know how wwe does table for three yes we we basically had that uh in uh in new york it was it, uh, rich was in town so it was uh me rich and mugen in a fucking steakhouse and we spent like an hour and change just basically talking ocw shit it was it was fucking hilarious like so like a lot of people got put over and a lot of people got buried and what's the common bond there though it fucking that's the goddamn site man no no i mean even more than that i don't know it's the obsession is the commitment because they've all done this mutants done it um it it was great yeah, cause it was great because it didn't feel like it wasn't like that weird awkward energy we were all just fucking sitting there like i had a steak because you know how i roll but we just sitting there drinking having a good old time and and fucking like, pe- like like we're fondly talking about like we finally talk about people like dennis and then drago and ken and steve and my you know talking about Martin and his kids mute mute be like everyone's just telling the stories and just going through stuff and making fun of the shithead people dum-dums or whatever and the, and the fuckery that we've happened through the years and and like Rich's history and Mugen's history and then my, the shit that I did. Like it's just I was like, it's like like second age. It just it was so cool and it didn't feel fucking like like a cringy magic the gathering thing. We just sitting there having beers, chilling on the fucking steakhouse, balling out like motherfuckers. And you know, and we left, gave fucking uh, Rich a big old pound, like ah, I see you when you come back to New York, motherfucker. It was just it's cool. It's it's strange. And I guess that's at the end of the day, even if most of this shit, like, whenever the fuck I decide to just close the doors is over, we still got like that that group of people that bond and people and stuff that we do stuff with and collaborate and work towards or whatever. It's, it's just think of it as the flying hellfish from the Simpsons. No. So <laughs> yeah, amazing. So oh. we'll never, we'll never talk about it to the outside world, but we're all no. bonded by this thing <laughs> and we're it's going like... to each other's funerals to collect each other's keys. And then the <laughs> last one standing gets everything. Oh my God. The hellfish. <laughs> it's amazing. The hellfish. <laughs> I love it. Or the hoop fish. Yeah, it's... When you put it to like that, it is. That's Again, that's really the only reason why I keep going. Because it's just... I do it for ya. Like, most of the time, I don't... I'm not going to say I don't enjoy myself. But a, a lot of times, it's extra work. It's like, damn. But it's just, like I said, I got my reasons. And some reasons are good, better than others. But I like just... I like having a community, for better or for worse. It's kind of cool seeing stuff. Or like, when they in the viewing party... When shit happens, that people go fucking nuts. Well, for the certain... viewing party is something that is a OCW, <laughs> an OCW creation in a sense. Because when the fuck have you? Then this is this is going to sound stupid, but when have you ever got a group of eight or ten people communally reading something at the same time, and then laughing and reacting to it at the same time? Not just the videos. Forget the videos because people are doing that all over the place. But the actual promos and stuff. No, there's no other place where you would genuinely sit down in a in a room in a group chat with a load of other people and just read something. It's fucking insane, but it's it speaks to what OCW is that that's something that we're willing to do for it, and it's yeah, it's I don't know, it's just weird. <laughs> it's, you might as well shut the site now because this is the this is the pinnacle of it. This conversation. It's the best thing that's ever happened. I, I think I think there's still we're, there's still ways to go. To be honest with you, um, it's just about figuring. Like my my thing is, I always the, another reason why I don't get so worked up over things is basically, at the end of the day, I like things to be simple, simple as possible. The stuff that we could do, like we we do stuff similar to the fan folks, like we were doing that like before they even started. And I was like, oh, there's a market for this kind of shit? I didn't even know that. It was just crazy. Like, I, I remember it. And the thing is, we were doing it, like, in fucking 08, 09. See, I was the like, weird oh, thing shit. is, you, you kind of invented it and then and then sat on it. You didn't go with the new technologies and nah, stuff. Did not. Did not really fuck with, with anything because I'm just stubborn and old. Uh-huh. And I'd rather, just, I'd rather just, you know, have it in our confined spaces of post everybody else. But we even, we do have fans. Um, you know, that Dougie's mentioned a couple of fans, I mean, people. And it's been, I've even seen random shit pop up in my inbox stuff too. Like people like, oh, I can't believe this guy won. But like, whatever. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like it's, it's kind of neat. Do we, we have, some of the fans know how awful the place can be. So they just stay on the outside completely and just but, watch. But the, the thing is, is, is not awful. It's, it's not from a bad place. A lot of the stuff that goes on is from a sense of we are all 
we're all gatekeepers of OCW and we're all here we're all sort of here to make sure that it flourishes and if somebody is a detriment to that then they're going to be you know they're not going to be treated with kid like kid gloves is yeah, yeah I, they're I, gonna get I, fucked it, up and the reason that that happens is it's from a good place it's from a, a place of no you're not doing what we need you to do so you either do it the way that we need you to do it or fuck off well when you like when i look i, I use cassidy as the example because that's the current example um what happens is we tell you to read the handbook and we even ask you like have you read it twice and the people go yeah so then in his case he he's the one that does the stats we even have a video detailing how the stats work so if you do all that and then you put your stats off and then there's something like like glaringly obvious where like if you have like a 35 somewhere, it's like then you didn't read the fucking video. And then like me thinking about it now, now I get upset. Like you're going to fucking sit here and lie to my fucking face. You didn't watch the fucking video. And then you're going to fucking play play weird when you should get when you get caught. Fuck you. So that in his mind, that's what Kaz goes like. Roo! So that makes sense. But it's like, yo, we don't really ask a lot. And nope. we really don't. We, and we again, most of the time, anything you do, we, we we don't care. It's like, yo, as long as you just keep it 100, we're good. Because at the end of the day, your life is more important than a goddamn fake, fake wrestling. But just take the two seconds out of your time to be like, hey, X, Y, Z. All right, cool. You got it, fam. Like, no problem. Like, for example, uh, Gentleman Jack used to help book Turmoil. And we he had a program with Versus. And, uh, you know, it was going good. And I was excited because both of them know how to fucking talk. So, I don't know. For Summerside last year. So midway through that, he fucking disappears. So we don't know if it's a family issue. If it's, we don't know anything. It comes to the point where fucking Rich has to like overtime write for two people. Uh, Dennis has to step in and do recording and stuff. And this is another thing too. As, as annoying as Dennis can be as a human being, as fucking a, much of a titmouse he can be, he does the fucking work. And he will pick up for people. He will put people over recording videos, yada, yada. He does all that. So I, that's why I, I, I'm always in his stupid, stupid, ignorant, annoying corner because he does the fucking work. So, yeah. So between them and I, I think it's just Dennis and, and, and versus whatever, they salvage what they can ha- what they can salvage. So all it would have took Jack and the thing is Jack was Booker. So we had to fucking re- restructure booking and everything. And it was a fucking pain in the dick, a, a pain in the ass. So I don't know. A couple months later. He shows up like with Leon, like, hey, anyone want to, if, if you guys aren't playing wrestling, you guys want to play GTA? Fuck you, nigga. Like, you can't spend five fucking, you had the, the thing is, you also had the easiest job in the fucking world. Cause it's like, look, this is the structure, you know, you're here with me, Kent, and, and you know, and, and, and Nate or whatever. You have the easiest job in the world. If, if you're confused about something or whatever, you know, let us know. We'll help you out. Or you, or the only fucking job you had to fucking do was say, dude, there's some stuff going down. It, that's it that, that's all nothing mate you don't even have to elaborate like guys man rl hit me I, i'm gonna be gone for a couple weeks i'm or, you know rl hit me i'm gonna be gone for like a couple of days or you know whatever okay cool man you take care of what you gotta take care of we'll, we'll, we'll match thank you man you know be easy we'll be here when you come back that's it that's all you fucking have to do and if you can't do that suck my fucking dick so when you come back and people ignore you and you get kicked from discord and all kinds of weird shit and people are mean to you that's why because you're a fucking asshole you can't even take fucking five minutes and just apologize for being a fucking shithead. Look, many moving fucking parts, man. Many moving fucking parts. It's not like you said. It's not all me. It's other people. So one, when you can't... One of the big strengths for CW, though, is that there's the ability to adapt. So yeah, exactly. It's always been that case. Like yeah. I, I only became world champion by accident. I wasn't meant to be world champion. The reason that I became world champion is because Parker's arm was fucked up. So <laughs> what had to happen was we needed to get the title. Of Parker, we couldn't do that in a fatal four way match because he wouldn't, he wouldn't give it up. So <laughs> he he ended up losing the match anyway to Kent at some point. I can't remember what the match was. And then the following match was me versus I. Parker would have still been world champion. Um, he, the only reason that he ended up anywhere near me was because we had to adapt to the fact that his hand was he couldn't physically play the game. So well, the order was he was he was fucked up for like yeah. days after. Yeah, the audible was here's what we're going to do. And four of us got into that match and we said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play to win. If Parker wins, then we'll work around it. And we did. And the rest is kind of history because of that. But it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to have to, because, because the only reason that we all agreed to what we agreed to do in that situation was because of the love of the place. Like there's no, 
there's no monetary gain from it. There's nothing yeah, to actually gain to. from it. Yeah, like, we don't have to. I don't care, whatever. But we, we park as one of us. So Parker couldn't physically do it until his operation was was done or whatever, whatever happened to his arm. Um, so we just, we worked around it and we made sure that he was, he was kind of, this sounds stupid, we made sure that he was kind of looked after in the best way because so he, he went out in a way that was, it protected him so that when he did come back, he was ready to go all guns blazing. And that's one of the reasons that, um, I know people still don't like it to this day, but that's one of the reasons that I was really eager to give Parker another chance because he kind of lost the title because of a real life hand injury. Like he couldn't do anything about it. Like he physically just could not play. It was just fucking like the, the, the nerves in his fucking elbow or some weird shit. Yeah. So I was, when, when he did come back, I was really open to letting him have another, cause he'd never lost the title. Not really. He was, he was on such a terror at the time that he never would have lost that title. And yeah, Ken did beat him, but I don't know how, how willing Parker was to kind of, do you know to actually defend the title because he knew that he had to take time off? There was there was kind of there wasn't a way of getting around it. So yeah, he I don't know how much he put into that. I don't know if he gave it one hundred percent. I'm not saying he didn't, but you know there's a there's an argument to say that maybe he didn't. So the fact that that all came about, it comes full circle. You look after each other. You look after your own people. Like as much as as much as me and Dennis have had our, our back and forth a lot. Um, ultimately, every time that we've fought, it's been a great match. Like, there's been nothing, there's been, it's been a great match. We've had fun. Um, and we've worked together to get shit done. And it's not, I mean, like, like we've said a couple of times, it, we're not best friends. We're never going to be best friends. But the, the reason that we do what we do, the reason that we're willing to work together, and the reason that, that we do, do it to such a, I guess such a high standard because we do. I always do everything to the best of my ability. I don't phone anything, and if I'm going to phone something, and I don't show up, if that makes sense. Like if sure. I know that I'm not going to do it to the best of my ability, then there's no point in me being there. That's just yeah. how I am in real life. So like last year when I kind of I jetted a little bit, I didn't have the fire in me, and I was kind of going, well, if I can't be a hundred percent, I don't want to weigh someone down, and that's kind of why I kind I gave Kent the nod that I was kind of thinking I need to just step away. And I didn't have the passion to kind of be doing it at the time. So we, you know, it's kind of like, even even though, even when you do kind of burn yourself out or whatever, you still have like a, you still feel like you have an obligation to the other guys to kind of go, well, here, you take the mantle. So like, that that's what happened in 2000 and whatever it was when I initially stopped. I think that was Lucian 8. Lucian nine, something like that. Yeah, when I I basically what I did was I handed the title off to I think it was the international title or the North American title. I handed it off to Mujin because I had to. There was there was no way I was staying around. I had to kind of get my head straight. I needed to go, so I handed it off to him. I didn't give it to him. He beat the fuck out of me. But <laughs> the reason that I kind of because we were in a stable and everything, it, it didn't make because I knew that he could beat me and I knew that he was kind of a way out for me at that, at that time so it was kind of it made sense for me to be thrown out in that in that sense so yeah and it was through an obligation to ocw and to that title that i wanted him to do that because you kind of you get like it's that old wrestling adage of you go out on your back that's how you do it and if you can't give the commitment to ocw then you get a lot more respect by saying no i can't do it we need to do something do you know, like, we need to get out of this situation. We need to kind of, I need time off, so this is what we're going to do. Yeah, next Rather is Rather than just disappearing. That's generally what happens with Lucian. People show up for January, and then, you know, they're out by Lucian. I don't mind that. Some people get, get you know, in their feelings about it, which is fair. But uh, at the end of the day, they, you know, it's it's a, a goal. And you set the goal, and you go from there. I, I don't mind that. My, my thing, as I said, I just... You got to say something. And if you don't say shit, that's when I lose my fucking mind. Because, again, it's so many moving parts and so much work. It's it's a lot of work to, to do this. And it, the fact that it runs so smooth is a testament to everybody in the back. Love them or not. That's the thing, too. I don't care if people don't like each other. I would prefer that they did like each other. But some people don't. And you know what? You don't have to. As long as you can fucking work together yep. and put your bullshit aside, I don't give a fuck. Just do what you got to do. Before, I would make people fight more. 
because yeah. they don't like each other. But now I, I don't really. I'm like, ah, we'll keep them separated. It's fine. Yeah, because you don't need, you don't necessarily need um, anyone to. I mean, obviously, you don't need to like each other to to make something work, but you do need to have a level of cooperation. And some people are childish. Some people don't want to cooperate. There's certain situations where. Um, Guys that will cooperate. I mean, this you you will disagree with this, but I consider myself to be someone who will cooperate with anything. If you want me to do something, I, I'm more than happy to consider doing it, um, depending uh, what it is. So, uh, and you're going to bring up trans now. Well, yeah. Well, now <laughs> this is where you. No, no, we're not going to go through that. That's yeah, fine. but no, no. There's a very good reason for that. Is because no, no, that's we've, fine. We've kind of we've had our comings and goings previous to that and i kind of didn't want to deal with that again because i'd been through that before so that was the reason i was kind of i didn't want to do that but i don't know you you grow to you grow to have such an affinity to your own guys and they are your own guys these people and, and your own guys and pam because pam's here now and you 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 want to look after them and as as much as sort of i run my mouth all the time and i pretend that you know, well, not pretend, but I, I, I have these rows with people over nothing a lot of the time. Just absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. If push nonsense. comes to shove, I will do... So say if you say to me, I need you to come in and do this match. I will think about it and I will kind of go, what are the pros and cons of it? You know, even, even if I'm not active at the time or whatever if you say to me you want me to do i mean not necessarily you but kent tends to be the person that will come and go can you do this for me if i'm active or if i'm not it doesn't really matter um i will always consider it and i will always look at it from all angles just because i want to if i can make the show better then that's that's fine because even when i'm not active i kind of look in and out of the shows and kind of, do you know, like keep my, keep my eyes on what's going on and stuff. Sure. But it's not from, it's not because I'm a fan. It's because it's my team. OCW is my team. And I always want to know what's going on just because I like to know what's going on. Like I'm curious about what's going on. I'm curious how people have changed, how things are changing. And that's one of the reasons why you do get that Lucian thing of like random people coming back because you don't, you don't get this sense of sat- satisfaction-ish to a point from anything else in life. So, <laughs> OCW has like a really I think, special. I think it's funny thing to give you a point of said a, a, a thing of satisfaction, but I kind of get where you're trying to go, on, but you lost the beat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know what I mean. It's like you you always kind of check in, and then what tends to happen when you check in is that you get the fire in your belly again. And then suddenly you find yourself on the active roster again, which happens all the time, which happened yeah. with, you know, it's happened with Vega a couple of times, it's happened with Chris Mania, it's happened with me more than once, it's happened with, who else was inactive? For, the Steve was inactive for ages, had a look in, decided he was coming back versus... Nate. Yeah, Nate, Nate, pre- Nate invented a whole new character and tried to keep quiet about it. And, and won the world title. Yep. <laughs> That's what I love. Uh, well, for a few minutes, and then uh, it was taken. I mean, off. no, no. Before that, I think he. No, actually, no. You're right. That one was for a few minutes. I think he. I don't remember if he had a legit run. I honestly don't remember. He might. He might have had. I, I don't know. I do know that up until that point, he was. You know, he did get every other belt, but that one. So that's the funny part about that. I don't know, man. I, my my thing is, I always the, what I always see is people go to shop box. Oh, it's nice to see that OCW is still here. Of, of course it is, motherfucker, because I'm running it. Yep. That's why. That's well, why it's still. Gonna... It's weird when people say that shit because I know that there are th- uh, what's that thing? There are three things in life: death, taxes, and OCW. Oh, that's hilarious, and I hate that. It's true, right? I don't know, man. The goal is get more people on the YouTube and Twitch and all that shit, and just keep building and whatever. Like we have a nice crop of people that I that I uh, you know some some of the rookies actually find hilarious. Uh, we have that FloJo person. Who is I don't know the thing with that with the Flojo Flojo came in with a, with a with a female call, so basically because she was on the paper of the first pay per view, they said that I Weinsteined her, so that's the gimmick now sexual har- ma- harassment panda. But on the side itself, Flojo's fucking kind of hilarious with these fucking weird anime memes. Uh, we got some dude who's doing the whole Brooklyn Brooklyn uh fucking fucking best gimmick, which is pretty in- entertaining. 
We got Ricky. Um, the rookies from last year actually came into their own H two O. You know, basically my my antithesis. Anytime I say anything bad about H two O, something bad happens to me, so I refuse to say anything bad about H two O. Court Marshall, which reminds me of Guy, Guy Fausto, but not as much skill in the game, but still like with that sense of humor and that writing and stuff and uh, entertaining as well. Um, Rex, who came into his own as well last year. Rex is kind of like this. He's kind of like diet trance, but uh, but more likable, I guess. I don't know how to put that. It, it sounds wrong, but I don't know. He just has like this weird dry sense of humor. And then the new guys, as I said, like Ricky, Seb, uh, who, who the fuck else? Even even B-17. I don't hate B-17. I, I didn't really like what he did, and that's why he got fucking excommunicated for the time. But that, that's, he's, he's, an example of, he's an example of peop, of somebody going into business for themselves and how people turn on you in OCW if that happens. Yeah, yeah he is. And then, you know, turn it around. And now it's, you know, everything, as far as I can tell, seems copacetic. He's actually entertaining now too. The the new gimmick he has, even though he has a giant fucking head uh, and weird hair, he's still it's it's cool. So his head I, I is actually know. longer than his torso. It really is gigantic, man. I don't know what happened, but it's it is. And it is understand so, how people go from like completely because I've is. always had the same face. Um, you know what? Not everybody. Not everybody like uh, like I don't. I don't um go through the what you call it, like the same parameters I had last year. I just kind of wing it by eye. So some people do that. But, that makes uh, me I feel know, Ill. That you know more. I still more or less look the same. So I think I got it right. I guess there's just like so many fucking people that you can add like on the roster that I just you know I enjoy. Well, not even enjoy, but like I don't. I don't know how to explain it. But even like newer people are significant. If that makes any sense, fucking Pam and Dennis, of course. Pam is basically fucking uh, a female Nate Ortiz, which is hilarious. And then Dougie's basically holding uh, PS4 together, and for the most part, even some parts of Riot. Like when everyone dipped out last uh, over the summer, it was pretty much him and uh, him and Pam for the most part, you know, holding that, keeping that going, you know, copacetic. So everyone's doing their part. It's kind of cool to see. You just, it's just, even now, there's just so many interesting rookies too. That like, like for example, Stigmata, this old motherfucker. He, I love, I love him. He's like this old dude, retired. Fucking, he's into '80s music and '80s horror shit. He's cool as fuck. He hates like rookies. It's, it's amazing. He's only been here for like fucking maybe a month and well, a half. He's retired, like he's in his sixties. No, no, no. He's actually retired young. So I'm sure he got money. So when it comes time, I'm asking for money when it's <laughs> when it comes time for shit. Speaking like, of money. No, I was gonna do a house of who plug, but I'm not gonna do I, that. I don't worry about that. You got fucking uh, CJ. Oh, no, no, no. It's just, I mean, like, it's just kind of cool, man. Like, I don't hate none of these people, except maybe trash. I, I hate, I hate, I hate trash so much. Fucking Spooter. Spooter is is an example of when I lose my mind and bury somebody, them taking it and just throwing it in my fucking face. I literally like I like do you remember how Spooder was born? How how the trash was made? Do you do you remember that story? Came you were there. Trash kind of there. video. I think no 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 not even before that. That that, that actually came out. That's actually that's actually after Trash Cannon. What what happened was I don't know what it was, but I came into Xbox many years ago, Xbox party. And you know, the hoots were there for the most part. Like everybody was like Mugen, uh Matsuda, Kent, I think you, I think Paddle. Well, Matsuda's not a hoot. Uh, whatever. There was a bunch of people in the Xbox party. Anyway, so need his power. Actually, it, people, whatever. People were talking about about like the ambition era, and then Spooter <laughs> decided- attacks himself onto everything. Yeah, he, he and then like, yeah, he was. I mean, he was there, but he really, you know, he's not. So he was there, and he was like, "Oh, you know, yeah, you know, we we did it." I'm like, "You didn't do anything. You're garbage." And I just. I, for like 25 minutes i just i just kept calling i was just everything in the book like i'm like your replacement matsuda you're garbage you suck you stink you ain't do, like just over and just non-stop everyone was laughing or whatever you know he took it his stride and then like i don't know the next week like the the trash was born man like and just now anytime he does something he does something just, like I don't know how to put it, man. It's just one of the most fucking funny things, like the funniest gimmicks and the funniest examples of just taking a uh, 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 fucking um, lemons and making lemonade be like fucking trash's lack of time management skills. And it's just it's fucking. See, you don't watch the show now, but on Riot, they uh, him and Dupree are feuding. So they have somehow managed to like uh, trash has somehow managed to make uh, 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 robots 
out of garbage cans and they you know you know Doctor Who, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he made you know how they have Daleks, he made trash legs. So all they, their only goal is to, is to violate uh, 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 fucking Dupree. So now he's made more. He made one out of Cass. He made one out of Dennis. It's it's, it's fucking. It's it sounds so stupid, but when you read it, it's so fucking funny to me. Like I remember I was putting the show together last week and I was fucking howling reading this shit. Like Cass is afraid of water, legitimately. Like he he almost died as a kid. So he's terrified of, of water in video games, in real life, any large body of water, he freaks out. So what happens? The trash legs try to fuck with somebody. Kent shows up to save that person. And the trash legs are chasing him. So Kent takes a bottle of water, puts it on the floor. <laughs> and fucking the Catholic just starts fucking freaking out because it's water. The other one is the dentist one who's enamored with Bell. So he's focused. It's just it's fucking ridiculous, stupid shit. But it's funny to me. Like the written word is still valuable. And that's fucking amazing when you have all these people saying dumb shit nowadays and you can put on an OCW show or rather click to an OCW show and read the content and it's good. It's not done by chill. It's like there's a flow to it. There's angles. There's stories. There's stuff. If you're a role playing person, you're like, oh shit, there's stuff going on. And it's, it's entertaining. People can say, oh, I like that. I don't like that. Like it's good. It's fucking unfathomable to have, like, like when you go to other feds and you see shit, you'll see like, oh, well, I want the belt because of this, that, and the third. Whereas here, you got, you know, shit has actual purpose. It's it's kind of crazy. Remember, yo, do you remember that time? Like, were you around for that time when when there was some very suspect things happening? Like, there would be things that would happen in OCW, and then magically they would appear on fucking television? That that weird point in time for, like, maybe about a year during a... Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I don't know if you were here or not, but it was some really weird happenstances that we that, like I'm talking about shit that was just straight eerie, like not sunshine, but just like really like, are you fucking serious? Like really weird things like like certain parts of gimmicks and stuff. And like and the theory that we had was that there was some there was like some low level dude actually kind of saw OCW maybe and was like, you know, what, this might be a good idea. Let me just pitch this. Like there was so there was all kinds of weird shit. Like the that thing happened with the music too. There was um, there was two tracks, two very incredibly obscure musical tracks that showed up on WWE television, and we're like, what the fuck? What, well, what the fuck? Like, like, one of them was um, was a song that that uh that, that uh um Poison used to use. You don't remember him, but that was that was in the Golden Era. Like this dude, he he had like a new song for me for about um uh, maybe, I don't know, a couple a couple of weeks. He had this 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 weird muse song. It had nothing to do with ECW. And sure enough, a fucking like, you know, he, he finally debuts the song. And then two weeks later, when you have the the the, the ECW versus WWE, whatever the pay-per-view, that fucking show, song shows up. That song has no like likes or reviews or nothing. How the fuck? Like, that's just the weirdest form of happiness. And there was another song for somebody else, for actually for another event. That, and I, I honestly I can't remember the name of it. It was some really fucking obscure song. Like, just, like, who the fuck would be into this music? This is such a weird coincidence. Because the first one, okay, fine. But then the second one, what the fuck? Like, it was just, just weird things used to happen. Like, very, very subtle, strange things. But, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, I, I think that'll probably do it for us because we've actually been talking for a hot, a hot minute. So, this is going to be a big one. And I have to edit it down a little bit whenever you get a chance to send it to me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You have any parting thoughts on it at all? No, I, I had I, I had all my thoughts. Hey, see, this is a weird like uh, a weird conversation because people think I'm some sort of a people think that I do shit just to do shit. You know, like the Rick James thing when he's a uh, stomping mud into Eddie Murphy's couch on the Dave Chappelle show. Fuck your couch. Yeah, people think that I just do shit for that, and like I've, like I've said in this, and like I'll continue to say. My ultimate goal is that OCW can be the best that it can be. So everything that I've ever done in OCW has been with that in mind. Like, I don't go out of my way to kind of damage people, hurt people, get rid of people. It's just all sort of collateral damage, if you will, to what I see as being the right thing for OCW. So this is just, this is me saying like an apology to, well, not an apology, but just people like, if you feel that I've wronged you in some way, then have a look at what you think I've wronged you for and kind of work out if you can see it from from like a, a bigger picture standpoint because I've always been, and you've always gone insane at me about this, but I've always been a bigger picture guy and you're like, yeah, but this works now. And I'm like, yeah, but does this work down the line? Because that's that's kind of where a lot of the, the sh- 
because you've always referred to me as when I was champion Shawn Michaels in the nineties. Because, oh yeah, yeah. Very because accurate. of the Jesus Christ, just just never shut the fuck up. Yeah, but it was always from a sense of it wasn't to get myself over. It was a sense of getting OCW to a point where, because my goal has always been there was a point when OCW needed me. It doesn't need me anymore, and. I wanted to work towards that point for the longest time. There was a point where I was kind of like we discussed right at the start of this, where I was doing this, ma- I was doing matches every single week. I was doing two, three matches a week, and I was kind of, I was recording stuff, I was editing stuff, I was doing all this shit, and there was maybe three or four of us doing the same thing, and OCW needed us then because it was on live support in that sense because a lot of people couldn't do the shit that we could do, and now. Yeah. There's so many people that can do the shit that we could do that OCW no longer needs me. Like, OC, me coming back to OCW now is more of like a... I can have more fun with it. Like, my run where I fought Nate at Lucian was... I was having more fun with it. My run last year as, like, heavyweight champion. Just having fun with it is not a sense of, you know, I need to be here. It's a sense of I want to be here. And it's kind of... It's come full circle now to... Because I've always, I've always never thought that I was the guy. In a real sense, because you never, you never kind of, you never anointed me the guy. Like I was never. Dupree was always the guy when it was me and him, and hmm. it's kind of nice to kind of. Because I know Kent feels kind of similar. It's kind of nice that you can kind of step out of the, you know, out of the bubble and be like, look what I achieved. It's kind of nice. Okay. And now the OCW doesn't. Now, and now I've seen that the torch be passed, and now that like obviously, Dennis is running with it, and Mugen's running with it because because realistically, don't forget Pam. Yeah, Pam as well. But I mean, like as world champions, because because realistically, Mugen doesn't come back to OCW if I don't rope him into, um, or doesn't at the time that he did. If I didn't rope him into that episode, remember when I did the Unleash live shows, like two or three of them. Mm. Mugen came back on one of those shows as a, as a surprise entrant. Same with Chris Mania as well. And it was like... It was because they saw what had happened with... Because I came back in and I fell immediately in with the Ambition guys and then shot them off to, like, shot off to the moon because they were really easy to work with. They were really easy to... Do you know, it was fun to work with them. And Mugen saw that and that's why he came back. Um... Spoon kind of saw it, but not really, because he kind of flip flopped. But the Steve said exactly the same thing. Versus said exactly the same thing. The torch was passed to the ambition guys, and now the ambition guys have passed the torch on to these new these new generation of people. These new hoots is what they're kind of becoming, which are like Dennis, Cass, Pam, um, what the fuck's that other guy called? Court. That's I forgot his name. Completely forgot his name. But they're kind of moving it on to them and letting the onus be on those guys and it's kind of weird to be of a generation I'm, I'm from two generations ago now in OCW and that's fucking insane in your head but it's, it's kind of liberating in a sense that this whole like you don't like I said before you don't understand the sort of impact that you've kind of made on these people's lives and stuff but the body of work that we've all created together is such that it's it's really like it's something to be proud of like the amount of the amount i know it's just pissing hours up the wall but the amount of stuff you go back through and look through the vault you'll have fond memories of stuff that you did you remember where you were at the time you remember it's kind of like music like you can equate music to something that was going on in your life at the time i can kind of do the same thing with ocw periods and i know where i was i know what i was doing and it's it's kind of like it's a memory the I don't know. It's just weird. It's a weird feeling to kind of have have this 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 body of work that nobody will ever learn about, <laughs> and nobody well, maybe, would ever care about. Maybe they will with the with the with the network at fucking four ninety nine. I don't know. The idea is that's that's the other thing with YouTube. I'm taking requests and uploading uh, people's matches and shit on via YouTube as well. So. I don't know. We'll get there. Uh, so so far, I, I can say I'm happy where, where things are going, and I'm happy about all the new people and stuff. So it's, it's worth. Yeah, yeah. That, what I was trying to basically say was that uh, if people pull together in OCW, OCW is great. It's only when you're a bit of a dick that people turn on you, 
And people have... I mean, I've never actually been turned on, it turns out. Like, not really. Uh, not that I don't think so. Not no. many people have it. You have to really be fucking... You either have to be super new and dumb as fuck to get, to get shit. For the most part, like, I, I try not to to give people shit but you know i don't know it's because maybe my my uh my patience is a lot higher than it used to be before it's, which is weird because you would think with less time my patience would be more 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 thin but now i generally have more patience for people and it's just like look give me a reason not to like you like i bet like i just banned some like the last person i banned was was b17 back in may and uh now i just banned somebody yesterday and that was only because they didn't fit the age criteria and they were probably kind of fucked hearted. Like, um, went to go FPR test and then it was like, oh, you know, got a bit of a run around. So I was like, you know what? It only wasted, only wasted about five minutes. So I was like, mildly perturbed, whatever. So, uh, Kent went to go do a FPR test. The guy fucking failed miserably. And then so tried to blame his mom for it. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and then he's like, oh, what? like, you know what? No, no, I refuse. Go fuck yourself. You're either a child, a troll, or fucking something in between. So drink bleach and go fuck yourself. I don't care. Speaking of, with that, I would say that now OCW is now 18 plus, motherfucker. What's going on in the handbook as of today? I'm tired of this shit. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not at least in the, if you're not at least 18, fuck it. This place ain't for you because you can't even be in Discord either. If you, because, um, if you ain't, if you ain't got hair on your ball bag, then you ain't yeah. coming in. Yeah, Recon's son was in in the Discord. Like you have to remove him immediately. That is not a good thing. It sounds like, son. yeah, he recons back somewhat. His son showed up on a Discord like, "You cannot be here. You got to leave." And you know, it's because it's it's you know, it's not really a place for fucking kids. So we'll leave it at that. Eighteen plus, unless you want to watch on YouTube. YouTube is family friendly for the most part, so you can do that. <laughs> but no Discord and uh, the site, uh, probably not the site either. It's not family friendly. You will see bad. Two-hour conversation about OCW. Prob- Probably, and I'm gonna when you send me the file, I'll edit it out what doesn't need. They are in the that I've not watched an OCW show for about a year. And I mean, there's some things you're a little off on, but for the most part, you're, you're spot on. Maybe you're putting yourself over. Who the fuck knows? Um, so yeah, when you're done, just send it to me, and then I'll chop I'm out what I need to chop. Over. How dare you? Yeah, I still gotta chop out some stuff, so it is what it is. Anyway, in the words of Russell Simmons, who may or may not be up for sexual harassment allegations, thank you for coming out. God bless and have a good night. Now you can cut the podcast off. (laughs)